All right, well, today marks the second anniversary of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant disaster. Two years ago today, an earthquake hit the island nation of Japan, causing a tsunami that killed almost 20,000 people. But the impact of the tsunami went beyond the initial impact of the wave itself. The ocean water flooded the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant's backup system, causing three nuclear reactors to melt down. The Fukushima disaster was made, has made us think twice about nuclear power as a clean energy alternative to fossil fuels. Take the case of the San Onofre a nuclear power plant as another example. Located right outside of Los Angeles, the plant experienced issues with its equipment 13 months ago and was consequently shut down. Now a new report released by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission shows how some of the plant's owners' decisions actually contributed to the generator's malfunction. For the latest information coming out of this report, I'm joined now by RT's own Ramon Galindo. Hey there, Ramon. So uh, what, are we, what are the biggest takeaways from this uh, report that came out on Friday? Sure. Well, this report that was released over the weekend by the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission is actually something that they requested from uh, Mitsubishi. Now, Mitsubishi is a manufacturer of the steam generator at San Onofre, which has proven to be faulty. And in this report, Mitsubishi indicates that uh, both Mitsubishi and the utility so Southern California Edison uh, had noticed that there were some issues with the design of the steam generators that they were installing back in 2011. Despite the issues, they decided to move forward, and uh, it, it only took about a year for these leaks to show up and force the, the closure of the nuclear plant. Now, uh, both Mitsubishi and Southern California Edison say that uh, even if they had addressed the issue, there's no way they could have predicted the tube wear, which eventually uh, resulted in the leak and um, ultimately resulted in the shutdown. And even if they had done those repairs, which uh, they had observed needed some uh, addressing before the installation, that this would have still happened. Now, I understand Mitsubishi's argument, uh, argument saying that they couldn't have prevented this, but from what the report concludes, I know a couple of senators had actually looked at it. Does it look like the company cut safety corners to avoid jumping through even more regulatory hurdles? Exactly. Now, Barbara Boxer has uh, been very vocal, saying that uh, the utility company knowingly installed these uh, these steam generators, knowing that there are flaws in them. Now, uh, the utility company Southern California Edison has said that when they saw the design they thought that it was sound and that they would have never installed something that would have put the public in danger but uh, critics say that uh, Mitsubishi and Southern California Edison were not as forthcoming uh, about possible issues with the new steam generators because they wanted to streamline the regulatory process to really get things going. And if they had addressed some of the issues with the uh, steam generators, it would have led to more uh, lengthy regulatory filings. And uh, so that's why Barbara Boxer and other critics are saying that, uh, that there was uh, some cover-up before these steam generators were actually installed. So how much is this outage actually costing us, uh, and how much will it cost to get it restarted? Sure. Now, this has been a very expensive project for Southern California Edison. The installation of the steam generators back in 2011 cost something near $700 million, and the utility has spent more than $400 million in just operating the plant since it's been shut down, and it's not even producing any energy. Now, these costs are, are maintaining the plant and importing energy from other places just so that people here in Southern California can have electricity, but really the, a, a big cost is really the confidence that neighbors around the nuclear uh, station have because right especially after Fukushima there are people that are really worried about the safety uh, around San Onofre. And I do we only have about a minute left in the show uh, but I have to ask you obviously the Fukushima Daiichi disaster happened two years ago today. Uh, how is this affecting the way that we approach nuclear energy here in the U.S.? Right. Well, following uh, the Fukushima disaster here, regulators have instilled uh, slightly stricter inspections, but uh, concerned scientists say that it's definitely not enough. There, start, there are still a lot of safety issues at plants around the country. So far, uh, right now, we get about 20 percent of, of our energy from 
uh, nuclear plants here in the U.S. So uh, people are still waiting to see uh, what happens at San Onofre and uh, how much it eventually costs to get uh, this plant back online if it ever does get back online. Well, and we do know that Japan is still dealing with so many of the issues. We know that Hawaii actually experienced a bunch more of debris floating up from the Japan tsunami and also from the Fukushima disaster. RT correspondent Ramon Galindo, please keep on the story for us. You got it.